Hi everyone, this is Matt, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to quickly create an abstract with AI. Now, the abstract needs to seduce the reader. It needs to make them feel that this is a credible source, they want to read the paper, they want to cite this paper. This is what it is all about. Now, I used Perplexity, Claude and ChatGPT for this exercise. And in all honesty, Perplexity is the way to go. ChatGPT and Claude are large language models and they tend to include vague sentences to fill in the information, essentially. They make up stuff, they hallucinate a little bit. Perplexity is an AI-powered search engine. It's very powerful, it's very much down to the point, you know, essentially down to earth, really. So it can actually create a very factual, research-based abstract for you that makes sense and that is convincing. And the prompts I use are going to be included in the description down below. So you can just simply copy paste them when you're creating your own abstract. So let's go. So this is perplexity.ai. This is what we're using. And now I'm going to copy paste the prompts. So first of all, create a structured outline for an abstract in a table format. That's really important. And now we want this section here, this column starter sentences with five examples. So Essentially, you could just use these as your starter sentences for your abstract. So this could be the end of this video and you could really just populate these sentences. But I'm going to take this a step forward and show you what's the next step to create a mock abstract for yourself. So I'm going to copy paste the text again, the next prompt. So this is the prompt here now. Now we use these starter sentences to write a maximum of Mm -mm -mm, words along abstract okay now however long the abstract should be that really depends on the assignment on the journal and they will tell you exactly what they want so it's usually 150 or 200 words 250 words so let's say we're aiming for 150 the introduction part of a paper should be about now you really don't need to go crazy on this um i'm just gonna write r loops that's that's enough information seriously just a, one keyword the methods included. Now, again, you don't have to go crazy on this. Perplexity will fill in the gaps. So what I really want to say that my research included multiple cell lines. OK, I'm not going to mention the techniques. I'm just going to say multiple cell lines. So the methods included multiple um, human cell lines. The main findings were that da 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 da. So, um, you can just write one thing. I would suggest up to three things, perhaps. You don't want to, you don't want to come up with more ideas here because essentially this is just an abstract. You just want to have the key takeaways from that paper. So I would say up to three main findings. So I'm going to do just that, and I'm going to paste my findings here. So the main findings were that USB 11 and Kiapon regulate stability of synotaxin. Loss of USB 11 triggers degradation of synotaxin, which can be rescued by all expression. OK, so this is fairly simple, just three takeaways. And then the conclusion is that the results have a wide implications on future research of R loops. So same things back, same thing as my introduction, really. And then in the end, we want seven keywords. OK, and now go. OK, let me read this abstract to tell you whether this is good or not. OK, there you go. This is actually really, really good. I really like that. So it automatically inserted some keywords that I would think of. Here is one of them, ubiquitin proteasome system or UPS. OK, we are talking about allop homeostasis. This is not something I mentioned, but this is definitely a really important keyword. E3 ubiquitin ligase. This is what Kiapuan is. OK, then we have polyubiquitination here. Um, da, 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 da. And then this is really nice suggest that the UPS mediated regulation of synotaxin stability has important implications on understanding the mechanisms underlying allop homeostasis and its dysregulation in various disease contexts. Beautiful. This is really nice. It's very scientific and there is no wishy-washy text here. Everything is down to earth, down to the point. It's very much information packed and it didn't make up stuff. Look, even the way it expli explains the, the methods, right? The methods involved the use of multiple human cell lines to assess the impact. Brilliant. That's all the information we want. 
So now, this could be your abstract if you are submitting to a research journal. And in a lot of cases now, you can submit AI-generated text to research journals. There's a disclosure where you can just take off, say that you use ChatGPT or Perplexity or whatever to create some of the text um, for, this, um, for this manuscript. Brilliant, you're done, sorted, that easy. And the keywords here are really good as well. You could potentially find keywords by, you know, going into Google Scholar and typing in R loops and then seeing what you get out, what Google Scholar suggests. But this is brilliant and you and your supervisor or other contributors to the paper should come up together with keywords. But I think this is a really, really good start, if not the end, to be honest. Now, if you don't want to have it AI generated, then we need to bypass the AI and humanize it. So let's copy this. And now we are going to Stealth Writer AI. Why Stealth Writer? Because it is, again, it works very well, but also you get up to 300 words for free. Okay, so if your abstract is 250 words, then you can easily use this. And I will humanize this text now. And there you go. So what I really like about Stealth Writer is that, first of all, it humanized it, but it also gives me five different suggestions. So you can go through them and pick up which one is actually the best. But just out of curiosity, let's copy this and let's check in GPT-0 whether it is actually humanized. So scan. And there you go, 95% prediction, human, 5% AI. Brilliant. And that is all for today. You have the prompt down at the bottom of the video in the description. So you can really quickly create an abstract for yourself. Um, once it is humanized, then definitely double check it, maybe rewrite it a little bit, because sometimes the humanizers also hallucinate a little bit, add information. But nevertheless, you have that perplexity generated abstract, which is really good. And you can rewrite it yourself as well, if this is how you want to make it human. Okay, so if you benefit from this, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.